Hello and thank you for watching today's health check. Today I'm going to talk about gastric ulcers, also called stomach ulcers. What do they look like when you look at it with a camera? In my view, they look like little craters onto the surface of the moon or surface of our earth. Sometimes there are several of them, like small little craters. Sometimes there's one or two big ones, like this big crater. So what are the different symptoms of stomach ulcers? Um, by symptoms, I mean uh, what does the patient complain of? So if I've got stomach ulcer, what a problem will I be going to with the doctor? So the first and foremost, uh, the most important symptom is pain in the tummy. So um, what sort of pain is it? Because it's an ulcer, it's like a, uh, somebody digging a hole in the ground. So somebody, uh, something digging a hole in the stomach. So it's a deep, boring pain. And because there is acid in the stomach, so it makes the patient feel like burning pain. So if this is our tummy, so that's the chest, that's the bottom of the rib cage, the green margin here, that's the belly button. So I've drawn in the red, the stomach, because the stomach, as you can see, some of it is in the upper part of our tummy, above the belly button, and some of it is in the chest. Main part of the pain that the patient gets is in this area of the tummy so this is where the they get the pain and it's a quite deep boring burning pain and the second symptom they get quite frequently is fullness so after eating food they feel full very quickly because stomach has got an ulcer in it it doesn't is not as soft can't expand easily and when they eat they feel full very quickly and also because it hurts when they eat, especially spicy food, alcohol, hot food, it really causes deep pain. Sometimes any type of food will cause pain and they start losing their appetite. So they don't want to eat any food. Sight of food doesn't look very good. And also they start losing weight because they don't want to eat anymore. They feel full, so they start losing weight. Now, vomiting is an important symptom because if you look at the diagram over here, if the ulcer in the stomach is in this area, in this area, where the stomach is emptying into the small intestine, this can block the stomach. And when the stomach is blocked, food can't go through. So food builds up in the stomach. And after eating, after an hour or two, most of our stomachs get empty in six hours or so. But in this case, the patient will have food in the stomach for many many hours afterwards and they can't keep it down after a while and it comes up they starts vomiting so these are the main symptoms the patient gets so to understand what uh, causes ulcers it's important to understand uh, first of all that what does a stomach produce and when i say stomach produce a stomach has got uh, inside lining which has got cells and those cells produce different substances and the main substances the stomach produce I have listed over here so we have got acid we have got an enzyme which is called pepsinogen a uh, long name which basically what it does it breaks down the proteins we eat so if you're eating meat lentils eggs etc which contains proteins this acts like a chopping board and it chops it into very, very small molecules. The third is a mucus, which is slimy stuff. And third is intrinsic factor. Now, so if we remove the intrinsic factor from the list, we are left with three things. Acid, enzyme and mucus. Now, to understand what causes ulcers in the stomach, it's important to know that stomach obviously is made out of uh, muscle. Muscle is meat. Meat is protein. So why does the acid and the enzyme that breaks are supposed to break down protein are not damaging the stomach itself? And um, they will, you know, if you uh, have too much acid, etc., etc., it will damage the stomach. But to protect our own stomach, nature produces this thing called mucus, which is like a slimy stuff. Now that slimy stuff, as you can see in this picture I've drawn, the green is outside lining of the stomach, which is the muscle of the stomach. Now the enzyme and the acid are trying to attack the lining. However, inside where I've drawn the red line, it is like the slime of the mucus, which is lining inside. And every time acid and enzymes come and attack the, our own stomach, 
it just bounces off or it just uh, neutralizes the acid so it does not cause any damage now it's like um, you know we polish our shoes or we put wax on the leather to protect the lining of our shoes it's a similar thing so it just protects the lining of a stomach so anything which produces too much acid or anything that damages the protective lining inside the stomach will predispose us or uh, expose us to us developing ulcers. All these protective lining in the stomach has got its limits and after those limits if there is um, anything which exposes us to too much acid in the stomach some people normally produce too much acid in the stomach and that's the way their body is. Sometimes there are very rare tumors in our body which makes too much acid in the stomach they all will uh, can cause ulcers. Also uh, too much acidic food and drinks, smoking, we all know very rich food, unhealthy food. Uh, there's an infection with a very important bacteria called Helicobacter pylori. Now this also puts it at the, at the risk of developing ulcers or inflammation of the stomach. There are certain medications, certain tablets, and these tablets quite frequently are steroids and non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. Now these Many of them are sold over the counter. These are meant for uh, pains, like we have headaches and things like that. And also for arthritic pains, like uh, pain in our joints. And uh, these are used quite frequently. And many of these tablets, when they are prescribed to the patients, uh, doctors will also prescribe a tablet to protect their stomach at the same time. However, we have to be careful because if we do uh, make ulcers easily or get indigestion quite a lot, and many of these tablets, like especially non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, they are sold over the counter over any pharmacy. So have to be careful when buying these tablets to make sure we are not uh, forming ulcers in the stomach. So if you are having too much pain in the tummy, you must always seek medical advice. Now, certain other thing that predisposes towards ulcers, like very major illnesses, and I'm talking about serious illnesses like severe burns um, on the body or head injuries or patients who are sick for months and months in the hospital, they can always, um, they can put us at a risk of developing ulcers. What complications can we get from developing stomach ulcers? Now, many stomach ulcers just cause pain and they cause um, loss of weight, loss of appetite, etc. But few of them, a small minority of them, can cause severe complications. One of the complications is bleeding. Now, there are two types of bleeding. One is a very minor bleeding, so slow trickle of blood. So the patient don't vomit blood, don't see blood in the poo. However, they keep losing blood and their blood count goes down. So they become anemic. Their iron levels in the blood go down. And we'll talk about anemia in one of my future videos as well. However, sometimes this bleeding can be very, very heavy. It's like um, when we dig a hole in the ground, you hit a, a pipe of mains water and water start leaking out, gushing out. Exactly the same thing happens when the um, ulcer is developing. So this is the lining of the stomach and the ulcer is developing like this. And that is the ulcer developing like a crater in the lining and if there is a blood vessel at the bottom of it, say there's a blood vessel going across, like a mains of water going across a hole in the ground, and the, our enzymes, our acid, is going to make a hole in these blood vessel. So blood vessel gets a hole and blood starts gushing out. So you can imagine these blood vessels are quite major blood vessels and then cause heavy bleeding. Um, if this hole becomes through and through, say so let's remove this. If hole becomes through and through, so there is actual hole in the lining of the stomach completely and food starts spreading into our tummy and that is a very serious complication called, which is a perforation of the stomach and can cause very serious condition called peritonitis and can risk one's life and usually requires an operation to fix. Last, I've written cancer. Now, some of the stomach ulcers can be cancerous ulcers. That's why when they are um, uh, diagnosed with a camera or whatever means they are diagnosed, 
um, they are always followed up. So there is the uh, the patients treated with uh, antacid tablets, and after a few weeks, the camera is repeated to make sure the ulcer is healing. And also at the time of diagnosis, the endoscopist or the doctor who is putting the camera down will always take biopsies to check that it is not a cancerous ulcer. So how is stomach ulcers diagnosed? The commonest uh, test that is available in this country and many parts of the world is a camera test, which is an endoscopy. So um, a camera is put down the throat or down the nose into the stomach and the endoscopist can see the ulcer quite easily. They can take biopsies of it to make sure there is no cancer in it and uh, they can repeat the camera after giving patient treatment for a few weeks to make sure the ulcer has healed. The second test is a barium x-ray and this is uh, drinking a dye um, uh, which is like a chalky dye and um, they drink the dye and the dye will go inside the stomach and line the stomach and um, if there is a um, ulcer, the ulcer can be seen on an x-ray. So these are the two main tests. I'm going to talk about these two tests a bit further in depth and details in a couple of videos time. So how can ulcers be treated? And uh, the treatment of ulcers um, is not that difficult actually. First thing is logical, which is removing the risks of developing ulcers like somebody uh, drinking too much alcohol, spicy food, junk food, smoking a lot. Um, that needs to be removed. Uh, another uh, thing is, as I discussed earlier, <clears throat> bacteria called Helicobacter pylori can predispose us to ulcers and that can be treated with a course of antibiotics. Uh, the mainstay of treatment, the main treatment is antacid tablets. And these days there are some very, very good antacid tablets available called PPIs. They stand for proton pump inhibitors. And these can be bought over the counter, but also doctors can prescribe these tablets and they are very, very effective in dealing with ulcers and healing them. Obviously, surgery is uh, always uh, should be considered, especially if there are complications of ulcers, uh, which cannot be treated by other means, which means by tablets, like if there is a patient who is bleeding or losing blood, then antacid tablets might not always work quick enough or uh, sometimes the bleeding can be stopped with an endoscope with the camera putting down uh, and clips can be put on the bleeding blood vessel or injected and that it will stop the bleeding hopefully but sometimes it doesn't work and surgery is required uh, also if there's a perforation of the stomach or if there's a cancer of the stomach, they, in that case, surgery becomes very important treatment. And I'm, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in a few days time with further uh, problems that can happen with our stomach. If you like this video, then please subscribe and I'll see you soon. Take care.